My people. My people. What the hell is going on here? I uh, appreciate you guys hanging out. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, man, it's been a second. So my apologies. I guess that's the first thing that I will say is uh, I apologize uh, for taking so long to um, to just uh, kind of address everything, get a chance to talk to you guys one on one. My apologies for that, to be honest with you. Um, you know, part of me just, uh, you know, it's kind of nice to get away for a little bit in our business. And I've been in the uh, in the industry for a long time. Um, sometimes you always feel like you're plugged in your social media, uh, it's, you know, it's part of our shows. It's part of what we do. Um, but I just needed a second, um, was actually really enjoying some time away from social media, was enjoying just getting a chance to, um, take a breather, still working on a lot of things behind the scenes, which I'm excited to tell you guys a little bit about. Um, but thank you for being here. Thank you for, uh, taking the time to, uh, watch this video, uh, two things I really just want to accomplish in this video uh, tonight. I want to uh, talk to you guys a little bit about why I left 710, why I left ESPN LA. Um, yeah, you know, I'll kind of give you guys a, a little bit of the inside story there. And then um, also uh, what's coming up next. So uh, it's funny. I, I had early on when I kind of had just made the announcement, I saw people or maybe I ran to people. I, I don't know. People were thinking like I'm getting out of the business or I, I don't know. I, and by the way, fair. I mean, I, I know I didn't really give out too much details, um, but definitely not getting out of the business. Uh, this is what I do. You know, I I, I genuinely love um, I love sports, uh, sports talk. I know I want to call it sports talk radio, but really in today's world, um, you have the ability to do it anywhere. You don't just have to be on a radio platform anymore. And um, I love the industry. I love covering sports. I love talking sports. I love watching sports. Um, but I also love the, uh, I feel like it's a, a personal relationship with a lot of the listeners and however you listen, you know, for anybody that's on this channel right now, however the hell you got here, if you got here because you used to listen to me on Lakers talk, or you listen, used to listen to me um, during COVID when I had my own show or the Travis and Sliwa show, which we ran for about three and a half years or so the Lakers radio broadcast, however the hell you got here or right here on YouTube. You know, I've had this YouTube channel for a while and I think a lot of people um, have tuned into me just because of this YouTube channel. So however you got here, I greatly, greatly appreciate it. And I'm excited to tell you about what's coming up next. So let's start off with uh, the with the 710 ESPN part, ESPN LA. Um, you know, it's interesting. I, I hit 15 years with that company. And I know I, I had a chance and I had an opportunity to go on 710 and, and kind of say my my goodbyes there. And I know it was kind of out of left field and it was a shock to everybody. To be honest with you, um, if you'd asked me a couple months ago, was I going to be at 710 ESPN? I would have told you, yeah, I'm going to be at 710. I'm sure if you asked 710 ESPN two months ago, would I be there? They would have said yes as well. So probably a surprise for everybody. Um, but let, let me I, I'll kind of just simplify everything. You know, it, it was really, really important for me, and I tried as best as I can communicating that to all the powers that be um, at that radio station. And trust me, there's a lot of moving parts there um, in regards to Good Karma, who's there, who took over ownership, but Bristol, Connecticut still runs all the programming. You got the local people that are there, the local staff. So um, I tried as best as I can setting up for everybody that... Um, Getting back down to San Diego was going to be my number one priority. You know, it wasn't going to come down to um, what's my salary going to look like. It wasn't going to come down to um, my specific role. That stuff I felt like no matter what I was going to be able to take care of. And I, I wouldn't let those things, you know, dictate what I want or dictate whether I was going to continue at that station or not. Um, you know, I, I'm born and raised out here in San Diego. I love this city. Um, all my family is here. And family is a very, very important piece of my life. And I think, unfortunately for me, I have allowed work and business to really be the top priority. That's not to say that, you know, obviously I, I'm not checking in with fam or anything like that, but there's only so much you can do. And it's not that San Diego is so far from Los Angeles, but I'm ready in my soul that it's time to move back to SD, plant my flag and, and, you know, work on 
everything else that I got going on in life, but family being the number one priority. And I just couldn't come to an agreement with them of what the proper balance was going to be. How much time in San Diego, how much time in Los Angeles. And I said this before and I'll say it again. I got nothing but love for um, the, the company. And when you're at a place for 15 years, there must be some type of a good mutual relationship. But they want people in that studio. And I completely understand that. And I'd be lying to you if I said, hey, you know what? Um, shows are better when everybody's remote. No, I mean, I, I get why, of course, everyone being in a studio is their main priority and why it's just a better product. I tried as best as I can to come up with uh, a happy medium where I could be in San Diego more days out of the week than, uh, you know, obviously than being in L.A., and where they were and where I was, we just, you know, I, I think neither side was comfortable with what the other side wanted. And that's what it came down to. And for me, I know myself very well. When there's something that's really, really important to me or there's something that I really, really want, it's very difficult almost to reason with myself because I know that's my priority. And I know getting back down to San Diego was going to be my top priority. I don't want to live in a hotel, right? I don't want to um, come back and forth. And and was there a way that I could still be there, but but uh, be living in San Diego? Yeah, but I, I didn't want that quality of life. So had a decision to make. And the decision I made was, okay, well, maybe 15 years with this company is the right number. Maybe five years of the Lakers radio broadcast was the right number. Four years doing a daily talk show was the right number. Um, I accomplished some great things there that I I'm very, very proud about. But at the same time, you know, I don't want to cut myself short. Listen, I'm not trying to sit here and tell you that I have the perfect plan and this is going to work out flawlessly because it's not it's going to be i walked into something and i'll tell you guys what i'm walking into in just a second uh it's risk it's a challenge um it's going to be difficult but i also felt really good making the decision i made because i knew it was important to me and i think if there's maybe something to take out of it um i know i could just speak for myself personally but hell if it helps anybody else out there at the end of the day, you just got to make decisions that you feel like is in the best, in your best interest, that you feel like is going to make you happy, that you feel like um, when the dust settles and you put your head down on that pillow, that you can say, all right, hey, you know what, That that's, you respected yourself to say, all right, that's what I want and that's what I'm going to go for, knowing that there is challenges that are going to be ahead, that there is no guaranteed paycheck coming in anymore that you know you got to figure out everything else moving forward here from from every detail that you could think of it could be health insurance whatever the case is you're walking into some unf unfamiliar territory and you're going to have to figure it out so um that's why i left 710 i left because i want to be in san diego and the cleanest thing to probably do is what the station did and what i did um, by basically saying, okay, well, I, you know, th there was a moment there where I thought, and I always kind of believe this that, all right, well, if this doesn't work out the Monday through Friday, well, I'll find something and, um, you know, we'll still be working together because of the Laker broadcast or this or that, but it didn't happen that way. And for whatever, whatever reason, right? Like sometimes I think, you know, things just kind of align the way they do and, um, and it didn't happen and it didn't work out. and. To be completely honest, I, I got, you know, I got no ill will. I, I think everything does happen for a reason. And I know that's cliche, but I really do believe that. Um, and I'm comfortable with my decision. And of course, that station's going to do what they're doing and they're going to move on. And, um, you know, obviously it's a it's a great job up there, but I think God's got a different plan for me. So I think that chapter was what it was. And now it's time to move on. So um that's what happened at 710 ESPN for those that, you know, were making assumptions of, 
there's no assumptions to make. And I know some people say, oh, you know, my, is something going on with his family or health or something like that? Um, no, there isn't anything specific. I mean, I have a huge family in San Diego. And um, are there certain things going on with certain family members? Sure. But I think there always is when you have this big of a family. But um, those are not the specific reasons of why I had to come back down to San Diego. I came back down to San Diego because it was time. And, uh, and that's the best way that I could explain it. Okay. So that's the 710 ESPN part. That's the ESPN LA part. Um, and now I really, really, really want to use every ounce of my energy moving forward, talking about what's in front of me. You know, we can always kind of look back at the rear view mirror. If it can help you with something great, but if you think it's, you know, holding you back or something along those lines, then uh, that's not healthy. For me personally, um, I feel like I'm already moving on. And uh, like I said, I, I, I felt good about my decision. And I'll, I'll tell you some of the reasons why I did feel good about my decision. Um, I Today's world, we have the ability to do anything from anywhere. And that to me, I've always kind of had this vision of just having this flexibility of a, being able to broadcast from San Diego, B, being able to kind of use L.A. from a business perspective. Anytime I got to get out there, then, OK, I'm a two hour drive where I am um, train station right across the street from me. I could shoot up to Los Angeles for whatever it is that I want to do. Um, I have the ability, I think, to accomplish what I'm looking to accomplish and still live in SD. With that being said. I am jumping into something. Um, that is going to be a, uh, it's going to be a different world and it's not going to be something that, uh, I'm a hundred percent familiar with. It's not going to be something that, you know, as the days go by that I can kind of sit here and tell you, I know it all. Oh, I know exactly what's coming. I know where the next check's coming from. I know exactly what to do in this situation, this predicament, that predicament. Uh, but I'm okay with that. And I don't know why I, I have such a kind of comfort level in that predicament, but I am, I'm telling you that I'm comfortable with that. Um, where I'm, where I am here right now, I used to actually do a couple of the radio shows. I've done them from here as well. I've had this office space. I've got a small little office space in, uh, Solana beach, California, as you can see here, there's actually a very, very famous sign here in Solana beach that sits on top of a building that was an old hotel. And now it's just office space. And, uh, that's exactly where I am. So I'm right here uh, close to the, uh, the 101, the Pacific Coast Highway. The five is right in front of me. To my left over here is, uh, is the ocean. Walk and a half away. I mean, literally that close. Uh, I got a, a basketball, like a half court um, a hoop over here as well. It's part of a public park. Um, I, I got the best jumper in the neighborhood. Let's just say that. I mean, if there's one thing that I've already established, you know what? Forget everything that I've said so far in this video. If there's one thing that I've, I've already established in this neighborhood, um, you need a jumper from the top of the key. Come on, guys. Come on. I mean, I'm shooting 8 to 10 from the free throw line automatic. Think of Steve Nash, Ray Allen, and Alan Sliwa. Think of that combination right there. Um, I don't know the hell, where the hell I'm going with that. But um, that's where I am. I'm, I'm here, in San Diego, or here in San Diego, but specifically in Solana Beach. And um, this is going to be my office. The news I want to share with you guys that's the most important news to me moving forward is Monday through Friday, I'm going to be live on YouTube. Monday through Friday, I'm going to do a show live on YouTube. I'm going to start at 8 a.m. Monday through Friday. And I'm going to start next week. Now, it's a little bit interesting with the schedule because um, – Monday, Lakers do have media day, and I do plan on being there for media day. I want to talk to you guys a little bit about that as well. Um, but Tuesday, I will start my show, uh, like I mentioned. 8 a.m. is when I'll start my show, probably go about an hour. 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. is going to be my plan. Um, that's where I'm basically going to take all my effort. And, you know, there's something about YouTube that – and I think you guys know this – I cannot tell you guys how much, how appreciative I've been of YouTube. YouTube has been the channel where, um, you know, I, I got a chance to 
start talking Lakers basketball on YouTube. That's when I didn't have a mic on 710 ESPN. I might have just started with a microphone, whatever it was. But I wanted to react after games. I came to YouTube. And I started doing it with no video. I would just do audio. Uh, that's what I was comfortable with. That's what I was kind of set up for. I didn't really have a set up to, you know, to have a visual space or anything along those lines. So I, I started on YouTube. And, you know, as you guys remember, as I started getting more and more opportunities on ESPN, it was a little bit more difficult to put up the type of content that I wanted on YouTube. But that's not in a bad sense. That's just because, you know, obviously I had my responsibilities on 710 ESPN. So with that being said, um, I have grown this channel to I think it's 24,600 subscribers is what I have. And. I cannot tell you how much I feel like there's so much growth um, in this space and to be in an independent platform and to have the opportunity to run my own business and to have the opportunity to the look of the channel, the feel of the channel, the, the, the uh, content, everything. I mean, from top to bottom um, to have the ability to say, okay, this is going to be um, it's going to be my baby, right? This is going to be where I put my blood, sweat, and tears. This is going to be my uh, 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 day-to-day business slash corporation. I hope that I can be sitting here and in six months, I could tell you guys, guys, I got three, four people that now work for the channel. Um, you know, ultimately what I'm trying to build on this channel is it'd be great to have a lineup. It'd be great for Fans, wherever you are, whether you're in Southern California or you're, I mean, you guys know this because I do roll call when I would do roll call. I got people that are tuning in from all different parts of the world. And that's for a couple of different reasons. Uh, You know, part of it is because that's what YouTube allows you to do. Um, uh, And and also because, you know, there are a lot of Laker fans that are out there. But my focus on this channel, yes, going to be a lot of Lakers conversations on here. Yes, a lot of NBA conversations on here, but it's going to be more than just that. You know, I I, I plan on the show that I'm going to do at 8 a.m. Monday through Friday will be the Sliwa show, and I'm going to hit on whatever I think is relevant. Um, like I said, a lot of Laker conversations, a lot of NBA conversations, but if there's something going on in the world of baseball, and I know there's a lot of people who will be tuning into me that are here in Southern California, um, Big stuff going on around the Dodgers. We'll talk about it. Big stuff going on around the NFL. We'll talk about it. Big stuff going on in the world of sports. We'll talk about it. And uh, I'm really, really looking forward to it. I really, really am. I I do feel like, you know, I've spent the last two and a half, three weeks. You want to call now you call it really the last month or so since basically the decision was made that, all right, I'm no longer going to be at 710 ESPN. It's a lot of things to do behind the scenes. There's a lot of stuff to figure out. And I'm not telling you it's going to be perfect. I'm not telling you it's going to look perfect or sound perfect. But every single day, I'm going to work on the biz. And, um, you know, what's going to be great about it, and uh, probably the piece that I'm looking most forward to is uh, just being able to kind of have you guys enter my world and take you through what my day-to-day looks like and talk about what the struggles are, talk about the – part of the grind of going out there and and finding partners that want to invest into your channel, into your show, into everything else that comes with it. So um, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m., hang out with me. If you're somebody that has hung out with me in the past, and man, I, I saw a lot of those comments. You know, I, I, I saw, I felt like I was getting, there's a lot of platforms out there where it's not the most positive. Maybe you're not always getting, you know, the love that you would hope to get or so much love on there. And the channel that I'm going to try to build is, you know, something of hopefully positivity, something hopefully of entertainment, something hopefully of education, something where there's a community on here that everybody feels like um, they got each other's back, that this is, uh, I want you guys to be as invested into this channel as I'm, I'm going to be invested in. Um, you know what? There's risk that comes with it. A lot of people would say, oh, what the hell are you doing? What do you mean you left a you left a job at ESPN and a salary and this and that and all that other stuff? This is where I'm supposed to be. I don't know what else to tell you guys. This is exactly where I'm supposed to be. I'm supposed to be right here. Um, 
a lot of the uh, the content that I consume is on the independent space on YouTube. A lot of the news that I get, a lot of it is on the independent space. A lot of the podcasts that I listen to, a lot of them are on the independent space. I love this space. Um, and I think there's endless, endless opportunities that I'm really, really, really excited uh, to be a part of. Um, I just ask for one thing. If you're somebody that's kind of rocked with me over the years and you either appreciate my style or respect my work or whatever reason that brings you on this channel, I ask one thing. The one thing I ask for is um, subscribe to the channel. That's it. And if you just subscribe to the channel, then you're at least going to give me an opportunity to entertain you and to try to, like I said, all the other things. I want to bring value, as much value as I can, to anybody that tunes in on this channel. And um, again, I, I think I mentioned I'm at 24,600 subscribers. If by the time I post my next video, we can get to 25,000 subscribers, it would mean the world to me. And I'm only going to look forward. And uh, I look forward to rolling up my sleeves and uh, and grinding for anybody that's out there and trying to bring, like I said, uh, as much value as possible. So thank you for watching this video. Thank you for hanging out with me. Um, join me on this independent journey. Join me on this uh, adventure where I'm not sure what it's going to look like in a month or three months or six months or a year or two years or five years or whatever the case is, but I'm committed to it. I'm looking forward to it. I'm definitely looking forward to taking all that experience over the years. You know, I, I was in sports talk radio since 2004, 20 years. I was in sports talk radio, the mighty 1090 down here in San Diego for five years. I did promotions. I did sales, did 10 years of sales at 710 ESPN was on the radio for over eight years. Um, I mentioned the five years Lakers radio broadcast, all that stuff. Let me take everything I've learned over these last two years and run my own business. That's what I'm hoping for. That's what I'm looking forward to. And I hope you join me on this journey. So thank you very much. I'll be back on. Listen, Monday, I got uh, Lakers Media Day. So I I'm pretty sure that I'm going to be a part of that. Can I give a quick, uh, I'm going to give a shout out to two companies here real quick. Okay. When I um, left 710 ESPN, Spectrum Sportsnet had reached out to me. And the timing of it was let's just say not the best timing. I was telling them that, listen, I'm no longer going to be at 710. And they still brought me on. And I went, you know, a couple of weeks ago or so, I went and did some TV with them with uh, Chris McGee and, uh, and Mike Bresnahan. And the fact that they still brought me on, even though I was not representing ESPN anymore, uh, I can't tell you how much that, that means to me. Okay. On Wednesday, I was at the JJ Reddick presser um, with Rob Palenka. How did I get in there? Because the Los Angeles Lakers still allowed me, even though I was no longer representing ESPN to be there. And, you know, that relationship that I have with some of the individuals there, the public relations department, um, again, like I said, it means the world to me that that gives me, I can't tell you the amount of, um, you know, it, it, it's such a uh, energy booster. I don't know what you want to call it, but it meant a lot that both of those companies were like, no, you're still good. You can still come. Like, okay. You know, I'm just representing my own company now and it's just on YouTube. Yep. You could still come. Um, that, uh, that means the world to me. So I'm excited about it. Um, all right. That's all I got for tonight. Again, thank you very much for tuning in. Let's get to 25,000 subscribers. Please subscribe to this channel. If you've yet to subscribe to this channel and I'll come back on on Tuesday and I'm going to start my daily show at 8 a.m. Please tune in. Thank you for being a part of it. Um, like I said, best jumper in Solana Beach. I mean, I, I'm churning heads left and right. I, I already see people out there just saying, hey, I don't know who this guy is, but he must be related to Steph Curry and Clay Thompson. Uh, he must be. I mean, this guy played in the league for did you see his free? Th did you see the form on his free throws? That's the buzz right now around Solana Beach. All right, I'm going to get the hell out of here. Thank you, uh, everybody, for hanging out. 8 a.m. on Tuesday, and then I'll be Monday through Friday after that. Hope you guys have a great rest of your night. Hope you guys have a great weekend. 
And uh, looking forward to uh, hanging out with you guys on a daily basis moving forward. Um, all right. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you.